Well, today I'm down at Goodwood and I have the opportunity to take some of Mercedes-Benz guests around this very historic racetrack. And to top it, we have the SLS AMG Black Series, which is a seriously quick motor car. So I'm going to be pushing the limits and showing people just exactly what this car can do on the racetrack. Keep your eyes on the road, please. Can you hold my bottle, I'll hold please? your water for you, no problem. Give me your top three favorite drivers. You're good looking, I should be looking at you. Don't take that the wrong way. No, no, come on. David, me again. Rory. Good to see you. You're back again. I am, sorry, I couldn't get enough of you. I know the way you drive is quite aggressive, so I thought we'd take it easy, maybe on the first lap, but we just have a, a quick catch up. Okay. So, wait for me to put my helmet and my seatbelt on, because I don't trust you. That's okay. Not that I don't trust you, but no, no, no. I'm scared. Sorry, yeah. Well, you know, anything can happen. And my shades so that you don't see me crying. <laughs> <laughs> right, David Coulthard. Here we go. I'm in an SLS AMG with you, my friend. Um, we're up at Goodwood testing the AMG range, and luckily you've given me some time with you. I just want to catch up about what you're up to after Formula One. How's, how's life been for you since uh, Formula One and then moving into DTM? Yeah, no, it's, it's all good, thanks. Um, I obviously... Came, uh, came to the end of my racing journey in 2008 as a Formula 1 driver and when I went into 2009 retired I had no sort of long, you know, long or short term vision to be a racing driver again um, enjoyed the opportunity of working with the BBC going to the Grand Prix so in many ways the cycle of my life was still following the same timetable now I'm fully retired sort of fully engaged in a number of uh, different what I'd call public roles with BBC and AMG. The big priority is the family, you know, wife, stepdaughter, son, five and a half. And told me the other day, it was a proud moment, he said, Daddy, when I grow up, I want to be a racing driver. And I'm thinking, great. And then he goes, a pilot, uh, a fireman. <laughs> he lists all of these different careers that he wants to have. So I said, well, son, you know, as long as you give 100% in every one of them. No loyalty. The time that you raced in Formula One was a completely different era to what we're, we're faced with today. How do you feel this change in philosophy moving towards hybrid systems and F1 cars, do you feel that it's more of a challenge than before for the drivers? Do you do you pine to try and maybe get back into it and see what you could do in, that, in those kind of cars? I don't, because I'm not someone who looks back. Uh, I've always been very much about tomorrow and, and the future, whether I was racing or today. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm curious to know how they feel a little bit. Actually, I trust what the people, the drivers tell me. If they tell me it doesn't feel as good as the old formula which I, that I raced in, then um, why would I have a different opinion on that by driving the car? You know, I think the drivers generally don't enjoy this recovery phase and, you know, saving fuel and everything. You know, if you look at the sport in general, the, the lap times are slower than they were a few years ago. Yeah. Formula One used to be about pushing to the very speed. limit. Not, of course, it's pushing technology, but it was about you know, lowering lap times and being able to, to look at lap records and things like that. Nowadays, you're not able to do it. It's become more of a marketing tool um, from an engineering point of view uh, as, a, as a pure racing formula. But you have to live for your time, and this is our time, and, and this is the modern Formula One, and it's uh, going to influence cars that we drive in the future. It sounds like you maybe got out at pretty much the right time then because of, of that shift away from ultimate performance. But just let me just ask you, of the guys who are currently racing, give me your top three favorite drivers or the top three quickest. Well, I think that you've got to say that Lewis, Fernando, and Sebastian Vettel have shown themselves to be exceptional over the last few years. Obviously, Sebastian's having a bit of a lean year by his standards, but uh, you know, Fernando is relentless given that he's not had the most competitive car, but he's, he keeps pushing. And obviously, Lewis, we, we, you know, we've seen that he's a very sort of heart on the sleeve, emotional driver, but uh, you know, he's got great speed and, and that's his key asset. Um, but that's not at all undermining you know, the coming talents of Daniel Ricciardo, you know, Nico Rosberg who's leading the World Championship as we speak, yeah. Mark Merritt, and he's earned himself a multi-year contract for Mercedes. You know, Kimi Raikkonen at various points has been right in that group as well. I think it's fair comment to say he's not getting as much out of the Ferrari uh, as Fernando. And, you know, that's not just down to bad luck. I think it, you know, has to, he has to take some of that on the chin. 
So, you know, I think Formula One's in very safe hands in terms of the, the talent that's out there. Brilliant, cool. So let's talk about this now, the SLS AMG. How does this compare to an F1 car? Obviously, it's completely different. Yeah, it's very different. We'll start to go a bit quicker if I'm going to be. Um, show me what you got. Yeah, and uh, well, this is a series of high performance road car. And that is the key thing, of course. It has to not only have all of the performance you would expect from an AMG in the Black Series, but uh, it has to be something that can be driven on the road. <laughs> well, look, the problem is not the speed, the problem is the point of impact. So, as long as you don't crash, you'll be absolutely fine. Well, I, I would love it if you don't crash, please. <laughs> we'll do one more lap for the hell of it, why not? Yeah. What impresses me, though, about you guys at the top of your game is that you have so much spare capacity to speak and, you know, and almost be completely robotic and calm about what you're doing, and yet all around you is potential disaster. stop it, when do I turn in, and how much road do I have to play with on the exit. And if you understand those three things, you will learn to expand to, to take the performance out of the car. Well, you make it sound so simple, David. Uh, I think I've got a little way to go. It's probably still time for me to develop my career to get up to maybe the level that you were at one day. But <laughs> No problem. Man, you're there already. You just don't know it. You just need to do laps. Yeah, fantastic. David, really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Well done. Mental, absolutely mental. I think I need a cool down lap myself. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, DC. Cheers, Take thanks. Care. Well Good luck this weekend, yeah? Thank you, thanks. All right. Today is a very special day. Yeah! I'm one of the first people in the UK, maybe even the world, to drive the i8. BMW's brand new plug-in hybrid 